brothers and sisters, welcome, welcome. Oh, I'm excited. I want to continue our study of the book of Acts. Acts chapter 2, we'll go straight into it, you remember? And Jesus had told them, wait, okay, let's start from Acts chapter 1, from verse 12. It says, then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. 13, and when they had entered, they went up into the upper room where they were staying. Peter, James, John, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. So that's where they were. And it then happened in Acts chapter 2. Let me just read from verse 24. 24, and they prayed and said, you, O Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which of these you have chosen to take part in this ministry, an apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell that he might go to his own place. I'll jump to Acts chapter 2, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a, a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And from that day, Peter could no more stay hiding and saying that he was waiting for the will of God, because of course he was truly waiting for the will of God. But when the spirit comes, he bursts forth. And some people will say he to burst out, <laughs> glory be to God. You will burst out. I believe that you will burst out, you will burst forth. And so the whole uh, 120 people who were waiting, the spirit came upon them and they were never the same. They were all in the streets. They were everywhere preaching Jesus Christ and God, Jesus, God and his son, Jesus Christ, manifesting, confirming his promise, his word, miracles, signs and wonders, the sick being healed, the oppressed being delivered, and there was great joy. And many souls were added to the body of Christ. Beloved brothers and sisters, the study of the book of Acts, we had touched on the key characters and key lessons. So I'm just going to go there straight and we'll take it on from there. So just to again recap that some people break the book of Acts into two when it comes to the characters, major parts. Acts chapter 1 to 12, looking at uh, Peter as the apostles, apostle to the Jews. And then Paul from Acts chapter 13 to 28 as the apostle to the Gentiles. Uh, but we know that a whole lot happened in the book of Acts. The entire uh, interaction and that the, the new movement, the change that happened. These believers who were empowered, endued uh, by the Spirit of God, empowered by the Holy Spirit, did great and mighty things. The other thing to note is that. Uh, Again, God by design, whatever happened in the ministry of Peter also happened in the ministry of Paul. And not only in the ministry or ministries of the two of them, they also happen in the ministries of the others. So it becomes evident from the book of Acts that availability is the key to manifestation. 
availability, you allowing oneself to be used by God is the key to divine manifestation. That's one word. Availability is the key to usability. Availability is the key to usability by God and therefore the manifestation. So that's what we're going to look a bit deeper. We quickly had touched on uh, being filled with the Holy Spirit, which I've just read now, uh, many examples. Preaching Jesus and souls were saved. Many examples in the life of Peter, Paul, and the others, Stephen, uh, Philip, the centurion, and many others here. Yeah? Examples of work, working miracles, power over satanic agents, imparting the Holy Spirit to others. I think we looked a bit at this. Persecution and imprisonment. So suffering as normal human being in the world and also as a result of their faith. Facing political and religious authorities, conflicts, oppositions. It was so fierce that somebody like Philip ran and was transported by the Holy Spirit. Angelic visitation, Peter had, Paul had, others had. And so brothers and sisters, all these things are there for us. Uh, other lessons and challenges, let's just mention a few. Contributions to meet needs, which often raises a lot of uh, argument, giving for the work of God, or giving to support this movement, this uh, 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 propagation of life that God has come to give to mankind, the will of God through Jesus Christ. Uh, Peter, Paul, they all had the different uh, experience of uh, uh, contributions. In fact, as you will read, Paul was actually bringing the contribution, or you will read it in Romans and also here in Acts, of the uh, brethren from the Corinthians to Jerusalem to give to the brethren there who were in need. Um, talking about um, career, Paul had a career as a tent maker. Uh, Peter left his career, so he was in full time, giving us different examples. So it is not one size fit all, but all by the spirit, just like the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 tells us. He says it's the same spirit that ministers, divides the will, manifests the gift in us to profit all of us. So there is a whole lot that the book of Acts offers us to learn. I want us to then start today by reading from, let's reconnect from the book of John chapter 17. John chapter 17. So we'll come from there to see. We've established that the book of Acts is about the implementation of the will of God. And we've also uh, defined to a large extent what the will, that will of God entails. Let's read the book of John chapter 17. We'll read the whole uh, chapter, the whole chapter. So I would like fast readers here to support me. Please open to the book of John chapter 17. John chapter 17, I'm going to read the first uh, vic uh, six verses. Then, um, Joy, you read from verse 7 to verse 12. Sister Blessing. You will read from verse 13 to verse 18. And then 
Brother Sonny, you will read from verse 19 to the end. Okay? I'll start reading. John chapter 17. Just to give the background, here you would clearly see what Jesus said about what is happening in the book of Acts. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son also may glorify you too. As you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. By the way, Jesus spoke this not after he resurrected. This was before he went to the cross. But you see, Jesus already spoke knowing everything that would be. So you have to understand the context. So he said, I have, he said, I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, oh, Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. From verse 7, Joy. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. For I have given to them the words which you have given me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came forth from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours, and all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but these, these are in the world, and I come to you, Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be ones, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I have kept, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. So you can see... What, what we just read in the book of Acts, uh, chapter 1, where Peter stood up and said, Judas was part of this, but he betrayed Jesus. You could see here, Jesus said, except the son of perdition, that he might fulfill the scripture. And so he was replaced. Sister Blessing, please go ahead from verse 13. Okay, I'm reading from the message translation. Now I'm returning to you. I'm saying these things in the world's hearing so my people can experience my joy completed in them. I gave them your word. The godless word hated them because of it, because they didn't know the world's way, just as I didn't join the world's way. I'm not asking that you take them out of the world, but that you guard them from the evil one. Mm -hmm. They are so more defined by the world than I am defined by the world. Make them holy, consecrated with the truth. Your world is consecrating truth. In the same way that you gave me a mission in the world, I give them a mission in the mm -hmm. world. Mission. So you heard that the same way you gave me a mission, I give them a mission. Remember, we're talking about the mission of Jesus Christ, which the disciples carried out. That's what Acts is about. Thank you, Sister Blessing. So, Brother Sonny, 19 to the end now. And for their sex, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for mm -hmm. them also which shall mm -hmm. believe on me through their word, mm -hmm. that they all may be one mm -hmm. as thou, Father, art in me, and I indeed 
that they also may be one in thee, in us. that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Verse 22. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, mm -hmm. and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them, as thou hast loved me. Verse 24. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, mm -hmm. the world has not known thee, but I have known thee. Mm -hmm. And these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them name. thy name. And we declare, I will declare it. And we we'll declare it that the love where thou hast loved me may be, may be in them, and I, and I in, them. in them. Amen. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, look again with me at that verse 20. Jesus said, I do not pray for this alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, through their word, that they all may be one. As you, Father, are in me and I in you, and they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. So here, Jesus gave the commission or the mission, or read the mission statement out to the disciples who were with him and said, this is for everyone whom, who will come and believe. You become part of that mission. Glory be to God. So the verses 18 to 23 emphasizes the call to oneness in Christ and God. And the accompanying glory and the accompanying glory of God. So for those who are sent to represent Christ, this glory accompanies us because Jesus said, we are one in him. I in them and you father in me that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that I have sent them just like you have sent me. And I've loved them as you have loved me. So Christ is the one who sent us. So that's why I said before, and I'm gonna say it again, that availability is the key to usability. Availability is the key to usability. And also making the attempt to do the work of Christ. All that you have seen in the book of Acts is also the secret to the manifestation. If you will attempt, you will see the manifestation. So availability is the key to usability and attempting in obedience by faith is a secret to manifestation. God bless you. I'll share my screen and then let's touch on some of those key messages then. I want to look at uh, angelic visitation, angelic visitation. One of our texts for this year is Psalm 91 and verse 10 clearly says, it says he will give his angels charge over us. He said, there shall no evil befall us, neither shall any plague come near our dwelling. Verse 11, he will give his angels charge over us. 
to keep us in all our ways. In our times, we tend to lose sight of this provision of God for our lives, angelic visitation. So let's look at Peter's example again and remind ourselves, Acts chapter 7, Acts chapter 12, verses 7 to 11. Let's read it together. Now, behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison, and he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly, and his chains fell off his hands. Then the angel said to him, Get yourself and tie on your sandals. And so he did. And he said to him, Put on your garment and follow me. So he went out and followed him and did not know that what was done by the angel was real, but through the thought he was seeing a vision. 10. When they were past the first and the second guard posts that came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which opened to them of its own accord. Oh, glory be to God. There is power, brothers and sisters, that is with you, that is with me, that is with us. This was angel of God taking charge when Peter was put in prison. And the gates opened of their own accord. The chains fell off from Peter as you saw there in verse 7, and his chains fell off his hands on their own. Is this possible today in your life, in my life? Yes. It is the provisions of God for you and I to enjoy. Let's read on. We are still in the second part of verse 10. It says, and they went out and went down one street, and immediately the angel departed from him. <laughs> Oh, this is always the place of uh, uh, what do I do next? You know, the angel took over the fight and brought Peter and completed his own and then left. So Peter, what do you do next? Verse 11, and when Peter had come to himself, he said, now I know for certain that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jewish people. So when he had considered this, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. Oh, the church was praying for Peter. And God dispatched his angel and delivered Peter. And when it has brought him out, he left him. <laughs> Peter has to figure out what he's got to do. Brothers and sisters, at that moment, the Holy Spirit is with you. The Holy Spirit is always with us. And so whether you see angel or you don't, know that God is with you and he will deliver you. Let your faith be very strong, be very high. Glory be to God. Let's just quickly go and look at uh, um, Paul's own experience, Acts chapter 27. Or oh, did we read this before? Did we read this? I can go to another person's experience. Okay, Acts Paul's experience, Acts 27. Yes, I, I remember we read this from verse 24. Okay, let's read from 22. And now I urge you. Uh, Acts chapter 27 from verse 20. Now, and now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. 23. For there stood by me this night an angel of God to whom I belong and whom I serve, saying, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar, and indeed, God has granted you all those who shall be, who sail with you. Therefore take heart, men, for I believe God that it will be just as it was told me. Brothers and sisters, whether you see the angel or not, know that the angels of God 
in their multitudes are with you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Elisha said, there are more men with us than are with them. And he said to the servant, I prayed, God, open the eyes of this young man. And God opened the eyes of his servant. And when his eyes were opened to see what was with them, oh, I'm sure he probably would have immediately said, let's finish this army of the, of the Assyrians. At, at, let's finish them. You see, that's why sometimes God does not open our eyes. As somebody said, when he heard me talk about this power of God that is available to us in the book of Acts, he said, if God allows man to have this kind of power, ah, man hasn't even seen a little of this, and they are so arrogant and want to finish the, the whole world. People, you, you do know me, these are the problems. God is with us. Oh, glory be to God. Let's see, Philip. Let's see, Philip. Acts chapter 8. So you know it is not just limited to Peter and Paul. It is for you. Just as Jesus said, he said, Father, I pray not for only this once, but for everyone who will come to believe, who will come into the way, who will become a Christian like Christ, born by the Spirit of God. Acts chapter 8, 26 through 40. Oh, Philip's home was so special. 26, he said, now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip saying, arise and go toward the south along the road, which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is desert, 27. So he arose and went and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch, of great authority under Cadets, the queen, Candace, the queen of the Ethiopian, who had charge of all her treasury and had come to Jerusalem to worship, was returning. And sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet, 29. Then the spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake this chariot. Go near and overtake this chariot. The spirit is with you and will guide you. Availability. Make yourself available. Tell yourself, God, I'm ready. Oh, I am ready. Let the way manifest in me. Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. I am ready. You know, we had assignment from last Sunday to this Sunday. Availability. Have you done anything? This is what Jesus, you, you heard it. John chapter 17, verse 20, read it again. If I read that message translation, it was nine. He said the mission, this is the mission. You and I have been called into this mission. So verse 29, the spirit said, go and overtake this chariot. 30, so Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you're reading? 31, and he said, how can I? unless someone guides me. And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. The place in the scripture which he read was this. Read it with me. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its sharer is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his justice was taken away. And who will declare his generation? Here we are. We are the ones to declare it. Hallelujah. And he is with us by the Holy Spirit to empower us and to confirm his word that we are those whom he has chosen and called to declare his generation. He said, for his life is taken from the earth. Verse 34. So the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does a prophet say this? Of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning at this scripture, preached Jesus to him. Jump with me to verse 39 and 40. It says, now, when they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught Philip away. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, the Holy Spirit, the spirit 
Philip was transported. Beloved brothers and sisters, there is nothing our God cannot do if only you are willing to make yourself available to carry out his mission, the mission of Christ, which is to propagate the kingdom of God here on earth. So Philip was caught up by the spirit of the Lord and taken away so that the eunuch saw him no more and he went on his way rejoicing. The eunuch went on his way rejoicing. He has received salvation. He has received Jesus Christ. There is always joy. There is always the confirmation by the Spirit of God when one genuinely receives Christ. Beloved, what the world needs is Christ. The world needs Christ. Christ is peace. There is absence of peace in the world without Jesus Christ. Jesus said, to the disciples, he said, in me, you will have peace. He said, but in the world, you have tribulations. Look at the whole trouble and disasters in the world. Look at the wars, the pains, the suffering, the hunger. And yet people will turn around and say, where is God? And God is saying, come to Christ, the Prince of Peace that you may have peace, that you may enjoy the provisions of God. So brothers and sisters, we want to conclude with a few statements, some critical statements, that the book of Acts is called the Acts of the Apostles. <laughs> However, the real emphasis is the Acts the acts of God and Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit in the lives of the apostles and early believers in Christ. And so this same acts is possible in your life and in my life. All believers in Christ who have received the Holy Spirit can also have all the acts as recorded in the book of Acts. If you were to say in one word, one last sentence, one final sentence, what the acts, the book of Acts is about, what would that one sentence be? I really would like to hear your thoughts on this. If you were to make one last sentence of what the book of Acts is about, what would that one sentence be for you? One sentence as we close. Because next week we're going to do the demonstration. We're going to again take another one week, minister to as many people as you can by whatever way by whatever means minister to people just tell people about jesus pray for the sick that is around you it does not remove giving them the treatment the medical treatment you know faith is at different levels and in fact, as I always encourage people, please take your medical exercises very seriously. Take the physical maintenance of your health very seriously. The food you eat, the exercise you do, your sleeping time, the way you manage stress, they are all very important. And indeed your prayer life for your health not waiting till you get sick before you want to pray. And having done all that, yes, pray for the sick. I want you to look at whatever miracle you saw 
or you have seen in the book of Acts and believe God for it for your life or for your loved one or for God to manifest through you and perform that miracle. That This is what the study of the book of Acts is about. This is the life of the way people. It is a movement for change, the right change, the movement to establish the peace of God, not the change like the world will say change, and they have nothing to be able to do that change. Jesus came to establish and pros prosper the will of God, the kingdom of God on the earth. Okay, so now, what would that, your one sentence be? And I'm going to hear everyone on the Zoom. Um, and I'm going to go in that order. So I start from Brother Dara. What would your one sentence be? So let me pick my pen, because I like learning from every one of us. So I'll be writing. OK, Brother Dara, what would your one sentence be? Go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. I think my one Good sentence. Afternoon, yeah. It can be as long as you like, eh? Uh, <laughs> it's actually a, 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 a request, and that would be to, to just be able to uh, translate these things into personal experiences that will eventually um, see me express Christ more to people around me and the world around me, basically. That's, that's been something that will open my heart in the course of these teachings. The question is, from the study of the Book of Acts, if you were to make one personal statement, one statement of what the whole Book of Acts is about for you, to you, whether it is your one takeaway or your understanding, what would be that one statement that you will make about the book of Acts? What would your one statement be? I would say continue to spread the word wherever I can to complete his mission. Continue to spread the word of God wherever I can to complete his mission or to continue. Excellent. Next, um, Brother Sonny. Yes, uh, Pastor, to me, the, the book of, of Acts is, a, is an eye-opener. It's an eye-opener in that uh, it entails a lot, which, uh, for example, starting from where the apostles gathered together I think they had the fear, but when they got the Holy Spirit in them, they actually started from there to become bold. So I think the the act of the apostle is an eye opener and it's a source of encouragement to me as a person that God is always there. What he did before, uh, he will always do that in this generation. So he's an eye opener to me. Great. What God did before, he can do it again in this generation. So it's an eye opener to him, to all of us, that God will also do it in our lives. And that's why I keep saying, make yourself available. Okay, Dr. Akpavio. Yeah, yeah, okay, thank you, Pastor, and greetings to everyone. Well, uh, what comes across to me is that uh, there's always help from God uh, when we exert ourselves to do what we need to do. Like, um, or even when there are difficulties. I mean, there are two issues here where Peter was thrown into prison mm -hmm. and um, the angel of God came in to facilitate his release. And uh, that was in a very difficult situation for him. And also the other one was the desire to know more and to understand the Bible. Uh, then when the eunuch was studying, then God sent uh, Philip to assist him. 
so in understanding what he was studying so that in two of these situations in difficult situations god will always intervene to help us out and uh, if we yearn for understanding and knowledge he is also there to guide us through in understanding so those are the things that uh, i could pick out from those two scenarios of those uh, that are narrated there in the acts uh, in those chapters wow that's so profound thank you so much doctor that's that's insightful so that's another version of the word that i said earlier that those who attempt make attempt will see the manifestation that making attempt is the secret of manifestation of seeing the manifestation thank you i think he's really brought it out from that so to wrap up there is something i want to still touch on it is about the doctrines because the book of Acts also touch on the doctrines. I'll just touch on these two verses and then we'll leave it there. Um, you hear the doctrine, okay, like I mentioned there, I said, so Acts chapter two, verse 42, Acts 2, 42, let's look at it. It says, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayer in prayers so you see here doctrine here is singular it is not plural is singular so the word doctrine there simply means in the teaching so what was the doctrine they were teaching the word just as you've seen everything you've seen them teach yeah in the book of acts seen recorded those those were the things they were teaching so they were busy teaching about the word of God. And remember, they did not have the New Testament. And that's why you would always see the apostles in this book of Acts quoting from Isaiah, from Psalm, from Moses, as was applicable. For example, in Acts chapter 2, if you look at from verse 16, there Peter was speaking, he said, but this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass. In the last days, says God, that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. So it, they were teaching what Jesus Christ has taught them. As you know, Jesus was also always referring to the prophets, to the psalm, and to the law. And saying how that speaks of him, Christ, and therefore confirms what Jesus has taught and which Jesus passed on to the disciples to teach. You would hear, so at this point, let me bring out something. You will hear what is called the Apostles' Creed. The Apostles' Creed does not mean that it was formed by the apostles, so that you may know. It's the church body that uh, formed the Apostles' Creed and different um, uh, bodies have looked at it and said this is representative of the central belief of believers in Christ, which many of us are aware and have read um, there have been one or two things there that the older versions had, which with time, uh, modifications, but not necessarily changing uh, so much. If you have the common understanding and uh, you're not religious about it, but you're concerned about what the Bible says. So just to say, uh, the Apostles' Creed is not the Apostles' Doctrine. 
it is of what has been formed by the church, the, 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 the body and rectified as representative of the central belief. Uh, without one or two points where there were differences and that those two points are mentioned. So it says, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the body of Christ. So this is where some older version had uh, the Holy Catholic Church, but that church wasn't representing any de denomination. It was meant to represent the body of Christ. But so why do you put the name of a church, just the body of Christ? So I believe in the Holy Spirit, the body of Christ, uh, that is the church of Christ, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You see, when you look at things like this, you ask yourself, where does the whole religion where, where do they create it from? Because this seems so simple, so straight and clear of what you can see and find in the Bible, that if you just stay with this body of belief, you can actually uh, say that the whole, um, those who believe in Christ are believing one thing. They're believing that there is one God. I mean, I know there are people oh, who spend so much energy and time to prove that Jesus is God. That's totally unnecessary. And by the way, as I've always told us from the entire Bible, the Father Almighty God is different from Jesus Christ. And Jesus has never said that he is the Father. So those are, on, I mean, absolutely unnecessary exercise because it does not help you in any way in your eternal life journey. God, the Father Almighty, his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, through whom God has brought salvation to mankind, through whom the everlasting covenant in the blood of Jesus has been established. And we have been brought into it and very many blessings that you can, you know, um, distill from the word of God, from the Bible and be blessed. So I just thought I should share briefly on this to bring this together because you may hear people keep talking apostles doctrine as is written there in Acts 2.42. It was basically talking about the apostles teaching and there is no specific doctrine of the apostle other than their teaching. And their teaching, it's simply what Jesus taught them and what is contained in the Bible, the, 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 the prophets, the law, and the Psalms. And this is where we bring the meeting to a close and we say, Bye-bye.